Name that tune. Brought to you by amazing liquid free zone that removes corns and calluses, relieves pain fast. And now free zone presents Name that tune. Yes, it's Name That Tune with Harry Salter's Orchestra and starring George DeWitt. Thank you and good evening. Tonight, we're going to present a special program of Name That Tune highlights. You're going to see your favorite contestants in their most memorable and exciting moments on Name That Tune. I hope you'll enjoy seeing these old friends again. Now, we're going to meet our first two contestants in just a moment. But right now, here's good advice from Dr. Black of Black Flag on how to get rid of those bugs. I'm Dr. Arthur Black of Black Flag. Aren't mosquitoes annoying? They bite, too. May I suggest Black Flag Insect Bomb contains five proven bug killers. And unlike ordinary sprays, it hangs in the air longer to catch more flying insects. Costs 10 to 20 cents less because Black Flag sells more insecticides than anybody. Remember! The only good bug is a dead bug. Black Flag dead. <laughs> First old friends we'll meet tonight are two contestants from different parts of the world. Jane Mullins, a Rotary International Scholarship student from England, and Benny Reynolds, a cowboy right from the wide open spaces of Montana. I think you remember Benny. He was one of the most talkative contestants we ever had on Name That Tune. And here they are. Benny, you're, you're uh, with the Madison Square Garden Rodeo, huh? Yep. Uh, my boy, uh, my four-year-old son Jay, is just crazy about the rodeo, Benny, and I'm sure that he and all the youngsters all over the country would love to have you tell something about what you do. All right, Benny? Yep. You, uh, you, you, uh, what do you wrestle those big steers? Yep. You, you come out of the, you come out of the chute, you mean trying to ride those, uh, Brahma bulls? <laughs> yep. And you do, uh, you do bronco busting too? Yep. yep. Well, Jay, and all little buckaroos out there, now you know about the cowboys, because Benny here is a real-life cowboy. Isn't that right, Benny? Yep. <laughs> Tell me, Benny, uh, <laughs> do all cowboys talk as much as you do? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Benny, uh, <clears throat> Benny, I know that on television, uh, all the cowboys wear their hats all the time, uh, like Wyatt Earp, even when he's kissing the girl, he has his hat on. <laughs> Would you feel more comfortable with your hat on? Yep. Well, right here, put your hat on. Now do you feel more like talking? <laughs> no. Well, Benny, it's nice having this heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. I really enjoyed it. Yep. Jane Mullins. <laughs> Jane Mullins, you're from England, and you're here attending Columbia University? Yes, I'm on a Rotary scholarship, and I'm studying for a master's degree in sociology. I see. Have you ever met an American cowboy? No, I've seen them on the phone, so I've never met one in the flesh before. Never met one in the flesh before. Benny, have you ever met an English girl before? <laughs> nope. <laughs> can't hardly understand her. You can't understand her? Her language. <laughs> Jane, what do, you, uh, what do you think of your first American cowboy? Well, I think he's better looking than the ones on the film. <laughs> Oh? But I, I've never seen anyone wear those funny shoes before. <laughs> shoes? How many shoes are a boot? A boot. <laughs> Did he surprise you? And I, I expect him to be toting a six gun. <laughs> toting a six gun? Hmm. That's right, Benny. Don't all cowboys tote a gun and play the guitar? I ain't gonna shoot nobody. That's just on television. <laughs> Jane, you'll probably uh, never have seen a rodeo, have you? No, I haven't. I'm going to go and see it now that I met Benny. <clears throat> Benny, is it hard to get tickets? Well, I don't know. Uh, all the cowboys get passes for their wives, and I ain't married. <laughs> I can probably get a pass. Better use my pass. I see. Thank you. <laughs> probably get one for your husband, too. <laughs> well, thank you, but I'm not married either. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd be mighty pleased if you both would play Name That Tune right now. <laughs> Get over the show now. You know, the one who wins this game will qualify for the Golden Medley. If you win that, you're on your way to the big Golden Medley Marathon worth $25,000. So 
So go back to your chairs now and we'll play the game, all right? The first song is worth $10, the second $30, and the uh, second $20, and the third is worth $30. Ted Rapp and the Harry Salter Orchestra will play the first number. So for $10, name this tune. <laughs> You know, you're not at the rodeo now. You got to take it easy. <laughs> who was that? Who was first? Benny? Benny, you won. You know the name of that tune? You are my sunshine. You are my sunshine. You have 10 dollars. Here's the 20 dollars. I better get out of the way here. Here's the 20 dollars song. Ted Rapp and the Orchestra are going to play this tune. You name this tune. <laughs> Uh, Benny, you were first. Do you know the name of that tune? Billy Boy. Billy Boy. You have twenty dollars more. That gives you thirty. That's the thing. One match. This is the most important song in the round. I'm going to sing it for thirty dollars. You name this tune. Pardon me, boy. Is that the la 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 la? Track twenty nine. Uh, Jane. Jane Mullins. You were first. You know the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Chattanooga Choo Choo. Well, you are right. <laughs> Have, uh, Jane, you have thirty dollars, and Benny, you have. Th would you like to be partners and go together for the golden medley? Would you? Would you like that? Yes, we would. It's up to you. Whatever you want. Yep. Benny and Jane became partners, and it was a very lucky partnership and a happy one too. In a moment, we'll see them meeting their right-in partner. But first, for sufferers of sinus congestion and colds misery, here's a word from Dristan. For sinus congestion and head colds distress. Now get quick relief with new Dristan Nasal Mist. First, to show you scientific proof of relief with this nasograph, a device invented by a doctor to measure airflow through nasal passages. See, the nasograph shows almost no air coming through this victim's nostrils. Now, to demonstrate, we spray Dristan Mist into one nostril only. In a matter of seconds, Dristan Mist penetrates deep into swollen nasal and sinus passages quickly shrinks those membranes, promotes sinus drainage, thus relieves pressure. In addition, a special protective ingredient controls post-nasal drip. Minutes later, the nasograph shows the left nostril, the one sprayed with Dristan mist, with free breathing restored. So for quick relief from sinus congestion and head colds distress, get Dristan nasal mist. And now here are Benny Reynolds, the Montana cowboy, and Jane Mullins, his English partner, the first night they met their write-in partner, Mrs. Lois Clary, the farmer's wife from Gladwin, Michigan. As you'll notice, now that Benny's getting used to television, he's much more talkative. I want to say good evening to all of you first. And uh, Benny, I see all Jimmy Smith, J.T. Smith, and all the boys from the, ro from the uh, rodeo here tonight to wish you good luck. And uh, I must say you're a very lucky cowboy, Benny, to have two charming young ladies as partners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clary, were you watching last week when your partners named all seven songs? We seven. certainly were, George. We live in a small farm just outside of Gladwin, Michigan. And I named that two night. All the children work real hard to get the chores done, to get the chickens fed and the pigs fed and the cows milked so that we can all get in the house and watch the program. And how many children do you have, Mrs. I Clary? have five, George. One five girl and four boys. Do you think they finished their farm chores early tonight so they can watch you? Well, I'm sure they have, George, but not because I'm here but because one of my partners is a real cowboy. <laughs> okay. Before I left home, Timmy, my five-year-old, said, Mama, you tell George DeWitt, now that Benny is on your program, name that tune as the best Western on television. <laughs> oh, thank you, Timmy. Thank you, Timmy, boy. Lonesome George sure appreciates your watching, boy. You keep sending those box shops. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Clary, is your husband uh, babysitting back home in Gladwin while you're here with us? No, George. Russ is right out there in the audience. Let's get the camera on him. There's Mr. Clary. <laughs> who's, uh, if he's here, who's babysitting? The whole town of Gladwin, Michigan is babysitting for us, George. Oh. <laughs> Some of the friends and the neighbors have come in to do, take care of the farm, and other neighbors and our parish priests are watching the children just so that Russ and I could be here to New York together. 
Well, I think you have some fine talent. You have some fine neighbors. We certainly do, George, the best. Well, hello to Gladwin, Michigan. <laughs> Uh, Jane Mullins from Manchester, England. Last week, Benny invited you over to see the rodeo. Did you go? I certainly did. And it was terrific. We don't have rodeos in England. Oh? Our cows are very tame. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, did you uh, compete in any of those wild, dangerous events while Jane was there? Yep. <laughs> did you know that uh, Jane was watching you? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, didn't it make you nervous? Yep. <laughs> Benny's being too modest about his ability. Um, last week at the rodeo, they announced over the loudspeaker at Madison Square Gardens that he's one of the roughest, toughest cowboys in rodeo competition and that he's one of the leading contenders for the title of world champion cowboy. Well, that's wonderful, Benny. <laughs> Benny, uh, tonight is the last night in Madison Square Garden for the rodeo. Or, uh, are you still in competition? Are you still in running for the world champion cowboy? Yep, I'm sitting second. You're sitting second? Well, you are modest, ladies and gentlemen. Benny is second in competition for the title of World Champion Cowboy. Why'd you tell us that, Benny? Nobody asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Clary, now you can tell Timmy and your other children that your, your, your partner, Benny, is not only a real cowboy, but may be the world's champion cowboy. I certainly will, George, and if Benny doesn't mind, before I left home, the children made out a whole list of questions for me to ask a real cowboy. Well, I know all the uh, children are interested in cowboys. I know my son, Jay, is. He walks around the house shooting at me all day long. And I'm sure that all the children out there would like to hear the answers. Benny, would you like to answer the questions? Yep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all cowboy questions used on Name That Tune have been authenticated by Mrs. Clary's children and will be answered in detail by Mr. Benny Reynolds. Welcome to Youth Wants to Know. <laughs> Go ahead, Mrs. Clary. Number one, Bart, my seven-year-old, wants to know, do you live on a real ranch? Yep. <laughs> With real cows? Yep. And real horses? Yep. Benny, your first three answers were very enlightening. <laughs> now, I want you to be careful how you answer. The reputation of all cowboys is at stake, right? Sorry? Okay. Roddy, my four-year-old, would like to know, is it true that cowboys like horses better than their girls? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Benny, Benny, uh, if you feel better with your hat on, it makes you feel better, put it on, because I know Wyatt Earp wears his hat all the time. You put it back on. <laughs> oh, we're like Wyatt Earp. <laughs> <laughs> and Dorothy, my eight-year-old girl, would like to know, why cowboys keep their hats on when they kiss girls? <laughs> I don't know. I don't kiss the girls. Oh. <laughs> you don't kiss the girls. There you are, Dorothy. You found out about life and romances among the cowboys. Uh, Jane Mullins, you're from England. You may have some questions to, to ask Benny. Yes, I have. Why don't you kiss girls? <laughs> <laughs> I wish this were color television. You could see a red face and a red shirt. <laughs> Benny has the healthiest red face I've ever seen on a cowboy. Benny, Jane told us that she went to see you at the rodeo three times last week. Yep, and she must have brought me good luck because I never got bucked off all the time she was there. You got thrown from the horse? No, I didn't. You didn't? Oh, you there. didn't? Well, Benny, I, I know the rodeo is leaving for Boston tomorrow. I hope you'll have good luck up there, too, uh, even without Jane. <laughs> Thank you. Well, George, I have some relatives in, in Boston I was planning to visit, and while I'm there, I'll certainly go and see Benny if it's all right. <laughs> 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 beginning of a wonderful partnership. We'll watch them in the first round of the Golden Melly Marathon in just a moment. But right now, let's see why self-polishing Aero Wax is America's number one floor wax. 3.59 p.m. A typically well-kept household. 4.01 p.m. Same scene. <laughs> Lucky mother. Lucky, really, because she uses new Aero Wax. Damp mopping brings the beautiful shine right back. That's new formula, Aero Wax. Scuff it. You can scuff it. Spill on it. You can spill on it. Track dirt on it. Track dirt on it. Then just damp mop, and the shine's still there. Floors stay brighter longer without re-waxing. More news. The new long-lasting Aero Wax is specially priced to save you up to 20 cents a pint. And yet, 
Aerowax is guaranteed top quality. Must satisfy you or double your money back. Best for vinyl or any floor. Won't yellow floors. And the brilliant shine can last for months. Start the day with Aerowax. Save up to 20 cents a pint. You have 30 seconds to name five songs. Name all five correctly and you will have $5,000. Next week you'll come back to try to make it $10,000. Remember, you must name every song correctly or the game is over, but you keep what you've won. Now for the Golden Money Marathon, Johnny Olson. May I have the cards, please? Here you are, George. Thank you. Our honored guest, Mr. Otto Harbach, has given us some of our greatest song hits. For your Golden Money Marathon tonight, we will play five of his memorable hits. Song number one. Exactly 50 years ago, Otto Harbach wrote this song and it became his first big hit. Name this tune. You know the name of that tune? Cuddle up a little closer, lovey mine. You are right. Cuddle up a little closer, lovey mine. That's a good start. <laughs> Song number two. In 1933, Otto Harbach and Jerome Kern composed the famous score of Roberta, which gave us this great song. Name this tune. You know the name of that yes. smoke is in your eyes? You are right. I don't want you to manhandle Benny too much, you know. Benny goes, girls are rougher than cattle. Now watch yourself. That's song number three. <laughs> From the beautiful score of Rose Marie. Name this tune. You know the name of that yes. tune? Yes, the Indian Love Call. Indian Love Call. You are right. You have 20 seconds left, so take your time and listen carefully to the song. Song number four. In 1925, Marilyn Miller sang and danced this lively song composed by Jerome Kern and Otto Harbach and Oscar Hammerstein. Name this tune. You know the name of that tune? Who? Who? You are right. <laughs> Four songs correctly. You name this next tune and you'll win $5,000 and the right to come back next week to try to make it $10,000. So be very careful. Song number five. One of the greatest scores ever written by the team of Otto Harbach and Jerome Kern was The Cat and the Fiddle. Here is the romantic hit from that great score. Name this tune. <laughs> The night was made for love. The night was made for love. That's right. Wow, wow, wow. Congratulations, congratulations. You have won $5,000 and the right to come back next week to make it $10,000. You will be able to come back once more. Yeah, we sure will. And you, yes, Jane, yes. and you, Tex. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and I want to say something to Mr. Harbach. I want to thank you for giving the world, giving the world these beautiful songs. And uh, oh, thank you. Uh, what would you say, Mr. Harbach, were your favorite Broadway production? What name? Oh, your, what, what would you say were your favorite Broadway production? Well, I have two productions off Broadway that I'm very off fond Broadway? of. Their names are Bill and Bob. They're my two sons. <laughs> Otto Harbach is one of the greatest songwriters of our time, and it was a real honor to have him with us. Next week, we'll see more of Benny Reynolds and his partners, because kids all over the country fell in love with Benny. And next week, we'll see him in action, riding some of those wild bulls and broncos and the rodeo. We'll meet our next two contestants in just a moment, but right now, if you suffer from pain of corns and calluses, here's wonderful news. Now, remove aching corns or calluses in days. Just drop on Free Zone, lift off corns. The moment you drop on Free Zone, it works instantly to relieve the pain. Continued as directed, Free Zone's medication loosens the corn itself. So in a few days, you can lift it off safely, painlessly. No more dangerous cutting or bulky disfiguring corn plasters. For aching corns or calluses, 
Drop on Free Zone. Lift off Corns. Get liquid Free Zone. We've shown you a Western spectacular. And now for those of you who like romance, here is the beginning of one of the strangest love stories of our time. George Smith, this is Nick Capaldi, a young lad from Scotland, and Robert Scanlon, a young lassie from Long Island. Well, good evening to both of you. Welcome to the main Let's see, this is Nick Capaldi, a young lad from Glasgow, Scotland, and Robin Scanlon, a young, young lassie from Jackson Heights, Long Island. Uh, Robin, how old are you? From Jackson Heights, I'm from. You're from Jackson Heights, that's what I said. Uh, how old are you, Robin? Five. Five? Well, you're a very pretty little girl. You're pretty, too. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, how old are you? Five. Five, and you look like a very good little boy. My mommy says I'm good, but I could be a little better. You could be a little better. Well, Robin and Nick, when I was your age, I was in kindergarten, and I got the surprise of my life tonight when I walked into the program. I found my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Yeager, waiting for me, and she's in the front row, and I want to put the camera on her. Monterey Avenue School, Lenny City, Mrs. Yeager, my kindergarten teacher. <laughs> Nick, that's, uh, that's a, a fine Scottish butter you have there, but your name is Capoli, isn't that Italian? Yes, my mom is Scots and my dad is Italian. Scotch and Italian? Well, that's a very good combination. My daddy says everything is good with a little bit of Scotch in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, do you have a girlfriend, Nick? Yes. Where is she? Is she here? She's out in the audience, yes. She's out in the audience? Do you write to your girlfriend? Do you write her nice love letters? You don't. Why not? Can't write. You don't know how to write. <laughs> well, that's the best reason I ever heard of not writing. What, what kind of girls do you like, Nick? Girls that have blonde hair. Girls with blonde hair? I have blonde hair. <laughs> what, uh, what color eyes should a girl have, Nick? Blue. Blue eyes. I have blue eyes. <laughs> There you are, Nick. We have the perfect girl for you. Would you like to marry Robin? No. You wouldn't? No, I want to stay single. Well, why, why do you want to stay single? You have more fun being single instead of being married. <laughs> Who told you that? My Uncle Bertie. Who did? My Uncle Bertie. Oh, your Uncle Bertie's a bachelor? No, he's married. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like your boyfriend here doesn't want to get married. That's all right. I'm going to marry three other boyfriends. <laughs> You're going to be a very busy housewife. No, I'm going to be a princess, a cowgirl, and a ballet dancer, and a nurse. Well, Robin, I'm sure you're going to need at least three husbands to keep up with you. Nick, besides being a bachelor, what do you want to be when you grow up? Private general soldier and a singer. A private general soldier and a singer? Yes. Well, I'm not sure what a private general soldier is, but uh, would you like to sing a Scotch song for us right now? Yes. What would you like to sing? Roman in the Gloaming. Roman in the Gloaming. Let me give a nice introduction. Here's Nick Capaldi singing Roman in the Gloaming. Roman in the Gloaming, on the bonny banks of plank. Roman in the Gloaming, we my lassie by my side. When the sun has gone to rest, that's the same that I Robin, I, I see, uh, I see you, <laughs> you gave him a little kiss there. I see you like Nick's song. I sing, too. You sing, too? Okay, you sing, too. What would you like to sing? Ain't she sweet. All right, Robin Scanlon singing Ain't She Sweet. Robin, <laughs> Robin, one, one thing, 
One thing I, I didn't understand there. Would you be kind enough to sing that against me? There's one word I didn't quite hear there. Would you sing it again, please? Okay. All right. Hey, Another oh, key. <laughs> Very conscientiously, we all fell in love with little Robin. And next week, we'll see another episode in the thrilling romance of Robin and Nicky. Now, I know I can't compete with Robin and Nicky when it comes to singing. But every week on the show, I try to sing a song, and time always runs out before I get a chance to finish. But there was one time when I did finish a whole song, and that's my mother's favorite highlight. So here it is for you, Mother. I can't give you anything but love, baby That's the only thing I have plenty of, baby Dream a while, dream a while You're sure to find happiness And I guess all the things that you've always pined for Gee, I'd like to see you look well Baby, diamond bracelets, Woolworth doesn't sell, baby. Till that lucky day, you know darn well, baby. I can't give you anything but love, baby. Well, that's it. That was my mother's favorite highlight. Next week, when you tune in, you'll see our cowboy, Benny Reynolds, in action at the rodeo, tackling some of those wild Brahma bulls. That's my son Jay's favorite highlight. Incidentally, if you're planning on going away for a summer vacation, why not buy one of our new Name That Tune games to take along with you? It's a great way to make new friends. Even if you're not going away on vacation, buy a game. It'll help take your mind off the heat. Our second edition has another long-playing record with a new selection of great standard hits. You'll enjoy playing it. Thanks for being with us tonight. We'll see you all next week. Good night. And go to sleep, little Jay. Night, night. If you become a contestant on Name That Tune, you'll be flown to New York by American Airlines with all expenses paid. I hope that you'll be chosen to make this wonderful, wonderful trip. Remember to send us your list of seven songs in case a duplicate will accept the entry bearing the earliest postmark. We reserve the right to make deletions and additions at our discretion. And now this is Johnny Olson reminding you that the makers of amazing double-rich Arawax, still on it, scuff it, then damp mop it. The shine is still there. Arawax has brought you name that's